Hello and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. Today I'm going to be reviewing a custom sword that I ordered last year. It's this rather nice um, Jesse Belsky, I assume it's pronounced Jesse Belsky, um, uh, Type 2A Skivona. Now, as, as some of you probably already know, I have a lot of Skivonas. Um, in fact, let's have a quick check. Uh, I have one, two, three, four... Okay, so I have, at the moment, five training Skivonas and two original Skivonas. So I'm a big fan of the sword type and I keep buying and commissioning new ones to uh, basically to just try and get as many different types as possible. I do try and pick up antiques uh, where I find them, but they are a little pricey, especially if you want something a little nicer, uh, which is really what I want. I don't want the old rusty falling apart Skivonas. Anyway, so this particular one, um, I'll just bring it up so you can get a look. Is it focusing today? Uh, I think so. Let's just have a quick look. As usual, I would think you'd much rather see the sword than me. So just give it a quick rotation. So if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, at least you can watch the first part and see the actual sword. Um, and then you can go, go away happy. Now, let's put it on my... No, let's put it this way around so I don't put a hole in the ceiling. So this particular sword, um, I saw that um, uh, Belsky had sold one similar because it's based on a, an original that he's had access to. And I quite fancy getting, getting a new custom, to be honest, uh, especially over COVID. Um, loads of things shut down. It seemed like a good opportunity to order more swords, to, to, which is, to be fair, all the time anyway. Um, and the nice thing with Belsky, unlike um, if you go to most other main sword makers, is everything he makes is custom and bespoke. Uh, there's also a downside to that, of course, and that everything is, well, not everything, but it can be quite pricey. And the way he tends to work is he constructs his own hilts and pommels and does all the extra furniture and details, and then he mounts them on um, manufactured blades. So this particular one, which I'm going to have to obviously wipe down afterwards because it's got my fingers all over it, this is mounted on a, um, a Castile, I believe it's Castile, broadsword blade. I'll double check on that, but it's a standard Castile blade anyway, which is is a good solid sort of all-round blade um, and dismantable as well. So if anything happens, it can come off. So you don't need to worry too much about the blade. So I just ordered it with the rough specs that I wanted and all the sort of time and attention went into the hilt. Now, I wanted a type 2A. So that's the one that has these two um, uh, sort of sets of, um, oh, what are you going to call them? Well, on some of them they look more like leaves, but on these we got these kind of little indentations or gaps um, laid out here. So you might see three which make a sort of a type 2B, um, or you might just see one which would make a, a type 2. Uh, I wanted a type 2A mainly because it's the one I didn't actually have in my collection. So I contacted him about that. Can you do it? Of course he can. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then a whole list of extra sort of choices that you can make. So I obviously wanted to get a D-ring. It's kind of typical of the design, so you can see it here. So you pop your, you pop your finger, your, your thumb, don't put your finger in there, pop your thumb inside and you've got a nice thumb grip. And you can also finger the quillen as well. Do both at the same time, or you can finger the quillen and rest your thumb on top of the thumb ring, whichever way you like. Um, so, specify the thumb ring. I wanted the knuckle bow bent over, which is um, so sort of typical of the design. You do find on museum examples um, where they've been straightened. Um, so you see them sticking up here, like my... Uh, trying to pull the swords down. So my um, swordsmithy, Skivona, um, he unfortunately never replied to me about the actual design, so it just came as standard with the kind of bent, well, unbent quillen which I would rather have had it curved, but needs must. Uh, let's pull that chat back. Okay, so, ouch, slight rough bit there. So, um, so yes, yeah, so you've got the, uh, the curved knuckle, um, uh, quill and arm back here. Uh, nice hand protection. Uh, if you look at the, if we're getting close, you can see you've got sort of the chamfered edges on the steel as well, which is, I hope you can see that. So look at the screen, I think you can see it, yeah. So you can see lots of nice detailing has gone into this and you've got sort of the extra embellishments. And then here, 
bring it around. You know, really, really nicely done metal work. So yeah, yeah top work there. Um, you can also specify the type of pommel. You can have a, a 3D printed, a cast, um, different colors, different materials. I wanted cast, I didn't want 3D printed, and I wanted it in, in gold uh, because, you know, it's an expensive sword and I want gold. Uh, plus, uh, lots of, you know, not, not all, but many Skivonas do have a gold or sort of bronzed um, pommel in the cat's head shape. So that's what I wanted on there. Um, and also you can choose um, your grip. So if you have a look at mine, let's bring it in again. So you can see I've gone for a green ray skin with um, extra gold wrap here. So it looks really nice, feels great in the hand, really grippy, uh, as you'd expect. Um, and the grip is, um, it's, it's kind of flattened out a little. So if you look, it's not completely round, which I much prefer. I really hate uh, completely round grips. Um, in fact, uh, looking at my originals, they, they're usually even flatter than this, making it much easier to hold on to. Um, so my requirements were nothing particularly complicated because it was a standard, well, it was a model he'd made before, um, but with a Castile blade on it. Um, cast pommel, so you've got the, uh, as I said, the details on the on the grip here. Um, nice finish on the metal, um, and it hasn't been cleaned recently, but you, if you look inside, even the inside is looking half decent. Um, a lot of Skivonas that you can buy end up being quite rough and ropey inside. Um, this one is not. Another thing I like is if we look at the pommel, um, you see this curved section here? You've got a little bit of a gap. It's not buttressed up against it. Um, sometimes you see there's a hole drilled through here and then they have a chain to connect. Obviously this one doesn't have it. You could modify it if you wanted, but that little gap is nice. Um, it stops it rubbing and twisting against the pommel. I'd rather have that or it actually attached to the pommel, but um, not kind of buttressed up against it, as usually happens with my darkwood swords. So interestingly, my head goes out of focus. That's good. That means that product mode is working. Okay, um, so anything else to say about it? Well, I have some specs here from um, Jesse Belsky. So just to give you an idea of the kind of thing you can ask for. So depending on the type of pommel, it changed the point of balance. Um, so this sword um, was originally going to weigh around 2.8 pounds. I actually have no idea what that is. So I'll, um, I'll post up the, uh, the metric weights um, when I finish the video. I'll put them in the description. Um, along with the length of the blade and all the other particulars. Um, but as you can see, yep, really nice looking sword. Um, how does it compare to an original? Well, I've got an original here. Ah, just be really careful because it's a very nice original. So if we look here, ah, I'm just going to put my sleeve on the blade. So this is, um, this is actually a Type 2B Skivona. And if you have a look at the cat's head, so quite similar to the way Belsky's done hers, although mine does have um, the hole poked through so you can attach a chain to it. Um, the metal work looks very similar to the quality that Belsky's done. Um, the pommel on this, just the wood and the leather is left. Uh, and you can see looking down, it's much taller than it is wide. So it actually is really comfortable to grip. I haven't actually found a Skivona yet that is as nice to grip as this one. And then if we compare, just so you can get an idea of how an original compares to uh, a sparring sword. So you can see the finish on the Belsky one, obviously it's much shinier, but you know, it's new. Um, the other one is you know, from the late mid to late 1700s. Um, it's a very long, uh, long bladed Skivona. Uh, and yeah, I think if you look at it, you can see obviously the original has a slightly more compact cage. But the Belsky one is still quite small. When I sp um, one of the things I forgot to say is when I ordered it, I told him I would be using just a leather glove inside. So I wanted it sized um, no bigger than it would need to be to hold my hand wearing a leather glove. Because one of my pet hates with Skivonas and basket hilted swords that have loads of hand protection is when they make them absolutely massive. So it's like you've got a giant bowl wrapped around your hand. It throws off the, uh, throws off the aesthetics, throws off the balance, you end up with a sword that's completely different to the way a Skivona should actually handle. Now how does this one actually handle? Well, it depends how you use it, because of course with a Skivona you have multiple choices. So you can use it as a basket hilt, 
So you just do your normal hammer grip and you just put your thumb through the thumb ring. So this would be the same as using a basket hilt, uh, a dussack, bit, bit of fluff flying around there. So if you do that, um, it's actually a really quick, nicely protected basket hilted sword. Uh, works, works nicely. If you decide to finger the, um, the quillen, um, it's, it feels quite short compared to, um, a, a, based on the actual weight next to the um, next to the length so you've got quite a heavy weapon you know heavy hilt quite a substantial blade but not a huge amount of uh, of length to the actual weapon so for sort of uh, for more thrust based work you feel a disadvantage uh, you're effectively carrying around a rapier in the, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of a sort of overall mass just without the really long slender blade but as an actual basket hilt or as a cut and thrust sword whether you finger the quillen or not um, it's a it's a pretty quick um, blade, um, you know, not as quick as a, as a kind of a stripped down side sword. Um, probably similar actually. That's a look. It's not vastly different to something like this. So this is the um, uh, Malleus uh, Fugitive, I think it's called. Um, and when you put it in your hand, it doesn't feel that much different to using the Skivona, even though you've got much more metal around your hand, just in terms of, obviously the Malleus has a really substantial pommel to try and help offset the blade uh, and the extra weight. Um, so they don't feel massively different. So, oh, just being careful because the original's just in front of me and I do have a habit of knocking things off onto the floor. So let's not do that today. Um, so I'll, as I said, I'll post up the particulars in the description. Uh, I don't have them uh, to, to, uh, to hand at the moment but much easier to just list them. Uh, the downside, of course, is a Jesse Belsky blade is not cheap. Um, this one cost, I, off the top of my head, it was about 1,350 US dollars. So um, I think it was about 990 pounds, which is a lot of money for um, a training sword. Now this is a sword that's going to be, when it's already covered in scratches and dings, this is a sword for fighting, not for hanging on the wall. Um, so yeah, it's not cheap. Um, but um, when you order it from Jesse Belsky, he stays with you all the way through the design and production stage. So when this actually started um, manufacture, when, when he started to create it, he sent me loads of photos almost every day of each part that he was working on, you know, bending, casting, well, no, welding, uh, all the finishing work. It was just a constant supply of material, so I could see exactly what was happening. Um, and then even down to the um, you know the choice of grip, I had loads of different pieces of material to choose from, and he sent me loads of photos so I could choose each one. So I ended up with the exact specification that I wanted, and it's I think it's the only custom sword I've ever ordered that arrived and handled as expected. Uh, in my experience, custom swords are always a huge risk because they in invariably end up being very expensive and never quite. Um, match what you wanted. This one did. So just have another quick look. So I'll bring it along. There we go. Let's have a look. I think that's working. And then the blade. Well, kind of the blade continues much the same all the way along. And then I've obviously put um, a tip, archery blunt, and a bit of extra leather on the uh, on the tip. And I hadn't shown you the end, but if you look, it's got a nut on the end. And you know, the nut is is a distraction. You know, you look at the look at an original; they obviously don't have a nut on them, so that's a shame. But it does mean it can be dismounted and swapped out for another blade. Um, that's to be honest. If I was ordering another one, I probably would have got it peened. Uh, I much prefer peened blades, but I actually completely forgot when I ordered it. Um, I know most people prefer to be able to swap out their blades. I don't. I much prefer to have a peen blade, and if it breaks, I give it to somebody else to fix. Um, I don't bother messing around. Uh, but saying that, it hasn't come loose, which is good. So much like, um, oh, who, what are they called? Armour Class. Yeah, Armour Class in Scotland, who seem to have, be the only company that can make dismantable blades that never come loose. Um, so far, this actually seems to have matched one of those, and it hasn't come loose. Maybe, I think it's got a spring-proof washer on there, but whatever they've done, it's holding together nicely. So anyway, that's the Jesse Belsky Type 2A Skivona, custom ordered. It's effectively a basket-hilted broadsword. 
um, but with a Skivona hilt. Um, any questions about it, or if you wanted to order one yourself, or about Skivonas in general, um, just pop me a message. Um, they're one of my favourite sword types. I like to use them and I like to collect them. So pop a message or, uh, in the, um, the comments section. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thanks for watching the video. And um, please remember to subscribe so we can keep getting more content up for you. Thank you.